How's it going, everybody? Hope you're having an awesome week. We're here to talk about the Italian Grand Prix. We had a beautiful weekend. The weather was pretty good across the board, which we really haven't had in recent weeks. And so we're at Monza, which is an infamous track that I've heard a lot about uh, throughout the past few years uh, following racing. And so I was, I'm eager to get into it, eager to uh, follow a track that has is really known for its high speed straights. It's got sections of these more fast sweepy corners, but also these sections where it's going from high to low speeds quite drastically, which is going to test a lot of these cars straight line speed and uh, with the low grip, low low kind of downforce type of track, we may see some new contenders. And so uh, when I looked at qualifying, um, again, weather was good. So there was no shenanigans as there has been in prior weeks, uh, but uh, some disappointing uh, results from Alpines getting knocked out in Q1. Uh, they've had some success in prior weeks. And so maybe this track just isn't uh, really fit for their kind of car and their kind of setup. Uh, so that's unfortunate for them. I know they were expecting a lot more. In Q2, I, I had a note here that uh, both Alpha Taris saw their way out as well. Um, unfortunate as I feel like Yuki's somebody who's been contending uh, for those top 10 finishes. And so uh, hopefully he's somebody who, who's going to climb uh, come race day. And then Q3, really, I didn't think it was any more than a Red Bull versus Ferrari kind of show. The other cars didn't really seem to have it. And, uh, you know, I feel like Ferrari really is showing out at their home track. And uh, there's a lot of exciting uh, energy uh, wrapped around that for this weekend. And so uh, Leclerc and Sainz were 1-2 for, for a little bit of qualifying. And for a lot of the session, actually, they, they got it pretty early on with like seven minutes to go. And I was like, man, is this how it's going to be? And with only about a minute or so left, they were still kind of right there. Uh, but just as he's done many times before, Max decides to to rain on everybody's parade here. Not literal rain, but he kind of sweeps in and, and has this habit he's built of, of stealing away uh, these pole finishes for other people. Um, and so he makes this huge jump for pole to get it away from Charles. And really you're like, okay, it's going to be Leclerc or Verstappen here. Maybe Perez jumps up, but uh, then Sainz sweeps in and is able to take it away from Max. And it's like, oh my goodness, we thought it was gonna be Charles. And all the girls are like, oh, Charles. But really he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't end up getting it. Um, and Sainz sweeps in and takes it for uh, with very little time left. And uh, really McLaren and Mercedes didn't seem to have it. They weren't really contending. And, and uh, as I mentioned, Stroll was out early, but we did see Alonso in there, but he really wasn't contending for for a top uh, couple rows here of, of the grid. But uh, really we're, the question that I was asking after qualifying was, are we going to see Ferrari take this quality pace into race pace? Is this something that's going to translate over? Is it not? Because in prior races, we've seen that where they maybe have qualified well, but then fallen off throughout the, the course of the race. Uh, but Ferrari gets pull at their home race, uh, which is very exciting. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into the race and talk about what I, uh, what happened and, and my thoughts on the race as well. All right, so the start of the race. Well, I guess right before the start, we did have a moment, and that was Yuki Tsunoda pulling off to the side during those laps leading up to the start of the race, unfortunately having some engine issues and engine failure. And so he was not even able to compete in the race, which is very unfortunate for him. And I, I kind of wonder, is was that an issue that was bugging him yesterday in qualifying or, or was it just something that happened today? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, but the start was very clean. Uh, of course, we had signs on, you know, starting the race and uh, really it was, okay, how early on is Max going to be able to pass signs? And nobody really made any contact from what I could see uh, from the start. And so it was very clean through those first few corners. Um, Albon looks pretty good and ends up getting one of the McLarens. Max gets a good run on Science, and he was really working Science early on, but Science kind of had his elbows out and was being extremely, extremely defensive uh, this race. And he really didn't want to give up that first spot and was reluctant to do so. Uh, and uh, Verstappen didn't end up passing him this time around. Uh, Perez and Russell kind of had a moment, and we see them kind of uh, cutting the, the, the chicane corner and not going all the way around it. And that was kind of a habit a lot of people had where they maybe braked up throughout the race and weren't able to make that corner and ended up having to give up a position or uh, whatever that looked like to get back to fair grounds there. Uh, but 
Perez and Russell have that moment. Now, Science holds the lead for a good 15 laps, and that kind of surprised me. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we get this more, uh, these really super long straights. And I was surprised with how well the Ferraris were able to kind of keep with, with the Red Bulls for at least that, that first part of the race. I mean, 15 laps holding off Max Verstappen with that kind of ride is pretty impressive. Um, but I guess we don't know when or if Max is sandbagging. We're not sure. Uh, I don't think he was. I think the Ferraris just had really good straight line speed uh, at Monza. Uh, Science locked it up in the chicane and eventually ended up giving that position up to Max. So we see kind of this smoke coming out of the tires and he really doesn't get a good a good uh, entry into that chicane because he locks it up and then Max, boom, strikes and uh, gives him the opening he needs. And they ran side by side right down and uh, Max was able to execute that pass. But as I mentioned, I didn't feel like it was that as easy as a pass as it has been in the past. Uh, well, that was a, that was a sentence right there, uh, but uh, it seemed like Max didn't have even with DRS didn't have as easy of a time with uh, the Ferraris this time around, but still got the pass. And uh, by lap 16, Perez finally gets Norris as well. We see Perez starting to work his way up and uh, hopefully trying to climb his way to a podium finish. But now that's kind of the start of the race, first 15 or so laps. Now let's get into the mid race and see uh, what exciting things happen there. And so as I mentioned in qualifying, the McLarens didn't really have all that much pace this weekend, neither did uh, Mercedes all that much. It really seemed like it was a Ferrari versus Red Bull kind of thing. Uh, but that being said, the McLarens were still a little bit racy um, and with each other actually. And they had a moment on lap 24, kind of almost getting into each other there. And uh, that was not good. You don't want to take each other out by any means. They didn't, but they obviously probably could have raced a little cleaner there. Um, lap 32, Perez gets a run and easily gets Leclerc. And again, he's working his way up the grid, trying to get on the podium. And uh, really, again, I mentioned Red Bull versus Ferrari. And I know people were maybe hoping a little bit more from Leclerc being the winner from a couple years ago. I, th I know coming into this weekend, there was a lot of hype about Charles Leclerc. I saw all the highlights on Instagram and everything and, you know, hoping that he would win the home race, but uh, presence of getting him there on lap 32. Uh, by lap 41, Hamilton is really working Piastri and uh, really working him at the back there and ends up getting into Piastri and definitely he could have given him a little bit more room there. I thought it was a little sloppy on Lewis's part, getting in the back of Oscar and they both end up not being able to make the turn. And what comes of this is Hamilton gets a five second penalty, which really hurts him. And we'll talk about that later when we get to the results. Uh, the last 10 or so laps, I know I'm kind of skipping from mid race to end race, but there really wasn't like a crazy amount of uh, action going on in that time. The last 10 laps, really the question was, is Checo gonna be able to catch the Ferraris? He already kind of got a uh, Leclerc, but is he going to be able to work his way uh, to the podium again? And so watching Checo and then you're also watching Hamilton trying to make up some spots. He, he recognized, okay, I've got this five second penalty hanging over my head. I really have to make up for it. And so he's really trying to do what he can to gain a couple spots and gain some time. And then by lap 45, Lando is able to, not Lando, Lewis is able to get Lando um, and make that pass. By lap 46, Perez had been trailing Sainz all day, but ends up getting a good run and taking the position to solidify a second place. And uh, from there, I mean, one of the best battles we got all day was towards the end of this race between Leclerc and Sainz, both fighting for that third place position on the podium. And, you know, as I mentioned, there's this crazy amount of hype with Ferrari coming into this race, you know, Monza's their track. And so they're all trying to get the podium. It's a really big deal for them. And so just a few laps left and even up to the last lap, they were going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And uh, science performs an, an over under move esque kind of move on Leclerc and is able to get Charles back on the straightaway. And so it's, he kind of into this chicane, he kind of goes under and then over and, and is able to get by him. And that's kind of the, the end all be all there. And he ends up sticking that position to get third place uh, in this race. Uh, Lewis Hamilton ends up getting Albon. Again, the Williams have, have been showing very well. I think Logan Sargent was maybe disappointed with this weekend and we'll talk about him a little bit later, but Alex Albon ends up getting passed by Lewis. And then Leclerc tries this last lap magic 
uh, you know, he gets the green light from his from his strategist to just go for it from his engineer and he's not able to do it but it really didn't cost him any position from trying to pass Carlos it was pretty clean uh, but he just didn't have it in the tank and Carlos as I mentioned ends up solidifying that that third place finish and Leclerc actually cuts that corner of the chicane and uh, yeah but still ends up with a, with a good finish uh, but what do we get from the results here let's talk about the results and then again my opinions on the race so let me go ahead and throw up the results of the race and we can go ahead and break it down. And so we get Max Verstappen acquiring his 10th consecutive win of the season. And, uh, you know, I, I saw on Instagram and I may, maybe I'll put it up here, but it said something along the lines of, you know, we're witnessing history and, uh, you know, this is one of the most, it's going to go down as one of the most dominant, you know, racing performances you know, ever in Formula One. And I kind of wanted to substitute the dominant for boring, uh, but you know, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> but we, we see a Max Sergio one, two, uh, similar to the to last weekend and what we've seen in the past. And then uh, Carlos securing that third place finish. And you know, that was a pretty big deal for him to get on the podium and uh, pretty emotional for him. So uh, props to him. You know, obviously when you start pole, you don't wanna, you know, give that up. But I think in this case scenario, he's happy with third place. Charles getting fourth and uh, then we see the Mercedes cats down below and you know they're about 10 or so seconds behind the Ferraris and as I mentioned they really didn't seem like they were competing for for a podium finish uh, this weekend but uh, I'm sure they'll be back next weekend so him and Lewis are are back to back there and then we see Alex Albon sliding in at seventh and uh, Lando Norris eighth Fernando Alonso ninth and uh, Valtteri Bottas ended up getting points for Alfa Romeo, so props to him. But really, I feel like some of these cats in the, the middle of the pack, to the end of the pack, it was a pretty quiet day for them. It didn't seem like there was a, an the abundance of shuffling around on, on that side of things. Liam Lawson, honestly, has been showing pretty well, uh, considering his situation and, and lack of experience in this, you know, this kind of degree of, you know, Formula freaking one, you know, and he, he's showing pretty well. And and honestly, I don't know if Ricardo would finish where he did or even, you know, Nick DeVries. So props to him acquiring 11th and, and just missing out on points. Uh, and then we see Oscar falling all the way to 12th. I know that's not what they wanted from him. I mean, their hope is that they can at least get two guys in the top 10. As of this most recent races, I mean, they, that's their expectation every weekend. Uh, Logan Sargent, 13th. And, you know, you kind of ask yourself, what, why are him and Albon so far apart? And you know, hopefully they can he can close that gap a little bit and show what he did last weekend and, and some of the pace he can have. Uh, Guao Gan Yu just didn't didn't have it this weekend, and, and Pierre Gasly and the Alpines just really an econ just it's a severe failure this weekend. They just did not have the pace in qualifying and in their race pace, and and then we see uh, Yuki Sonoda having having the DNF. I mean that's Alpha Tari, but and Lance Stroll just not showing well. He didn't qualify well either. Nico Hulkenberg and Magnussen both finishing a lap down, and, and that's unfortunate. And then Espan Alcon having the DN DNF as well. And, and so really, I feel like we have a lot of losers this weekend compared to the winners. I mean, winners, I would say, uh, we're really, uh, we've, we've got Red Bull and we've got Ferrari, and then maybe you say Alex Albon, but I, I would say most, and, and I guess Valtteri Botas and Liam Lawson, but I would say most everybody else probably is disappointed in how this weekend went. Uh, honestly, uh, my opinions of the race, very infamous track. You hear about it a lot. Monza is a popular name. It was a beautiful day for racing. Uh, I thought it was a clean race overall. Um, you know, I wish there was a little bit more uh, action in the mid pack, at least, and maybe a few more contenders up the front because I feel like it was just kind of a four car race or really just a three car race for a lot of the, a lot of the day. Um, but it was cool to see uh, a well-known, you know, historic track raced and uh, it, was, it was really a beautiful race. And uh, it's kind of what I've come to expect from, from watching Formula One racing. I, I'm not, um, you know, expecting, you know, some crazy finish. And especially, you know, we, we haven't had a clean race in, in the past couple of weeks. And, and so um, weather-wise has been, has been a factor. And so... I think we're kind of back to the to the norm, and though the past couple of weekends haven't necessarily surprised us all that much, uh, we're falling into what what's the expectation and what's the norm. It's just a you know green flag, 
kind of uh, nice day of racing. But what did you guys think of the race? Is there anything that uh, stuck out to you guys that, that really excited you from uh, from the race? And uh, what are you looking forward to uh, for next weekend as well? Uh, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see more motorsports content uh, from the Rhino Racing channel, and if you uh, really enjoyed the video, give me a like, give me a subscribe. I'm a couple subscribers away from 100 subscribers, and so that'll be a pretty good milestone for me. And uh, yeah, have a great weekend, and thank you for watching. Peace out.